you can regain your health no matter what for desire backed by faith knows no such word as impossible hi this is your host arjun i'm a functional medicine practitioner and i'm here to motivate uplift and empower you along with sharing proven and practical solutions that will help you regenerate your health so that you can step up to a whole new level of more joy peace success and align with your higher vision welcome back to the show everyone i'd firstly like to start with an apology if i have kept you all waiting for a new episode it's been quite an intense week for me as i was trying to make ends meet but anyways i'd like to announce that you can now look forward to new episodes every weekend that's every saturday and sunday i like to do three episodes actually which i will try to deliver on fridays whenever possible okay so starting off in this episode we'll be looking at the hot topic of why we get fat and why losing that excessive fat is such a big problem it's no surprise that many people struggle with this problem considering that as always we have been told just half the story and my belief is that if you know what all leads to it in the first place you just wouldn't do those things am i right firstly let us get rid of the idea or belief that excessive weight gain in fact is only due to excessive calorie intake though that's only one of the many factors there are more reasons as to why it may happen and why our body at times stubbornly holds on to it our body isn't broken or stupid it does what it does for a reason which is almost always in the name of survival let's start with the well known factor first that's excessive calorie intake let me very briefly tell you that many foods might have the same calorie amounts but they differ tremendously where their nutritive value are concerned let's take a donut for example and say it has 100 calories almost the same amount of calories as an apple when you eat a donut it rapidly gets absorbed since it's made of refined flour and sugars there's no fiber along with it to slow down its digestion and not give you a blood glucose spike so you'll find that you're not even satiated and you will feel like eating more and more it will give you a jolt of energy for sure but you'll most likely end up feeling fatigued later on plus its nutrient profile is rather poor at the most you'll find it fortified with b vitamins which probably isn't even that much bioavailable for being absorbed and on top of that it's most likely inflammatory on the other hand an apple is nutrient dense its fiber content is not stripped off so it will help you to feel satiated and for most of us it won't cause our blood glucose levels to go through the roof just wanted to give you a small heads up that different foods are handled differently by our bodies depending on our microbiomes our past habits stress levels etc however processed artificial foods are almost always going to have the same negative effects on all our bodies so that's how when our meals consist of processed and refined foods we tend to eat higher amounts of calories compared to when we eat whole and natural foods it's impossible to overdo whole and natural foods unless of course we do it on purpose or we completely ignore eating hygiene like for example chew less and mostly swallow our foods after a few bites or sit in front of the television or with our phones in our hands anything that basically distracts us from our meals apart from that anything that increases the glucose load on the body be it a high glycemic diet or chronic stress which also includes insufficient sleep all of this over time exacerbates blood sugar which needs to be stored away as fats and that's how we gain excessive fats and 
which also further leads to insulin resistance type 2 diabetes. It just does not magically appear overnight. And in this case, cells are suffering from low energy, organs and cardiovascular system are suffering from too much sugar, and the body continues packing away and storing more and more fat. Another reason can also be accumulation of toxins in the body. And most of our toxins are stored in our fat cells. That's why our body stubbornly doesn't want to let go. Not because it would love to store it, but due to the fact that it doesn't want it to float around and cause damage. And why would that happen? Because our channels of detoxification are not functioning well. Like for example, if you have constipation, hepatic biliary congestion, etc. Remember, detox is not directly about drinking a green juice. It's what the body does naturally. It's a function of the body. Although green juice is healthy, indeed, yes, it does support the process of detoxification. Then there is hypothyroidism, which causes the metabolism to get sluggish, causing weight gain. Plus this condition leads to fatigue, which again discourages the person to get active or exercise. And a hypothyroid condition can be a result of inflammation or impairment in nutrient absorption, basically insufficient iodine, or stress. Or it can also be an autoimmune condition like Hashimoto's. We also have hormonal imbalance, such as estrogen dominance or testosterone deficiency, an issue in both men and women that can lead to weight gain as well. Testosterone is important for building muscle and decreasing body fat, apart from many functions including libido and joint health, and can be low for a variety of reasons like stress, excessive exposure to estrogen or excessive alcohol intake. So a deficiency in testosterone can lead to not just weight gain, but also things like low motivation, irritability, and even insulin resistance. On the other hand, we also have estrogen dominance, which is mostly a byproduct of an uncleared estrogen or even due to um, a block in estrogen metabolism or an increase an increased estrogenic load due to endocrine disrupting chemicals such as pesticides, herbicides, parabens, etc. Uh, which is not surprising these days considering the heavy usage of pesticides in our crops along with these endocrine disrupting chemicals also found in our self-care products. Also in cleaning agents we use at home. And yes, these are the toxins that also get stored in our fat tissue, as I mentioned earlier. Also, the fact that we tend to store our food and water or get it from the stores packaged in plastic. Although BPA-free plastic is being used and considered safe, I personally feel that it won't be too long before other plastic compounds also start joining the list. After all, it's an artificial chemically derived product. I find that the likelihood of finding such things safe is pretty darn low. And just a side note, estrogen dominance commonly leads to symptoms such as PMS, which includes stubborn weight gain. Okay. Another reason on the list is food sensitivities. Weight gain can also be due to food sensitivities. And if that is the case, then the best thing to do will be to first try eliminating gluten and dairy completely for four to six weeks as a trial. And then a further elimination diet can be tried from there. If this seems confusing, I'd ask you not to worry since I'll cover this in one of the future episodes. My main motive for today is to make you all aware as to why we gain excessive weight. And lastly, but most importantly, stress. Chronic stress, the master of all, is like a most wanted high profile criminal in the disease world. 
Apart from being a major contributor to any disease or health problem you can think of, it's also a major driver of stubborn excess weight gain. When we are stressed, a hormone called cortisol is released, which breaks down muscle to generate blood sugar in the process of gluconeogenesis. It does this while simultaneously increasing insulin resistance. And high cortisol also affects thyroid activity. Basically, T4 is converted to reverse T3, uh, and reverse T3 is the storage or inactive form of this metabolic hormone. And you'll be shocked to learn that many people who are trying to lose weight inadvertently increase their cortisol along with reverse T3, all with excessive exercise or, or insufficient calories intake, for example. This is why, in spite of eating less, dieting and busting themselves in the gym, people still don't lose weight and at times might just end up gaining some of it right back. And a side note, if the adrenals are busy pumping out stress hormones, testosterone production is going to suffer. For a long time, I too suffered because I too did not have a clear picture until I got into functional medicine not too long ago. I'm still a student and I'm learning. I've also continued my journey to resilient health. I won't lie to you and say, oh, I'm a picture of great health. But yes, I'll get there soon and will also help you to get there too. Okay, with that, we have come to an end of today's episode. Until next time, take care and stay happy and healthy. If you need further help and support, feel free to join our community on Facebook or Reddit. For a more personalized support, you can start by scheduling a free call with me. If you find what I do helpful, you can also support the show by becoming a patron. All links can be found below in the show notes. Until next time, stay healthy, stay happy.